Good morning. Last night I was surprised to hear that Phyllis Ann George had died. She was only 70 years old. You may remember Phyllis George for being the co-anchor on the NFL Today back in 1975. She was there with Brent Musburger, Irv Cross, and you remember Jimmy the Greek. It was the, She was the first woman to be a national sports broadcaster. It's hard to fathom today, 45 years later, that that, that would really be a, a unique and new thing. She was truly breaking ground being on the NFL today. It turned out that she had been born in Denton, Texas. It's where she grew up, and she went there to North Texas State University. In the end, she was a great classical pianist, but her big break came in 1970 when she won the Miss America contest. It changed her life. She said it was the springboard for everything that would literally happen in the future. It's what got her recognized and noticed and the opportunity to go into sports broadcasting as a female sports broadcaster. After she did that, she'd go on to be a host on CBS News this morning. She would host People Magazine. She would have quite a career in television and, and she was such a wonderful and warm personality she was able to get such great interviews out of people that, that so many of the men interviewers couldn't get. She had a great interview with Roger Staubach, all the way to a Joe Namath, to a Ronald Reagan. No, she was amazing in, in what she was able to do. But it wasn't always easy for her. No, there were so many people who wanted to tell her, you're a female. You can't be a newscaster. You can't be involved in sports broadcasting. She had a shoebox where she collected all these letters from people who wrote in telling her how bad she was doing and why she couldn't do this. And she finally had to make a decision to stop reading them. She started putting them in a shoebox. She kept them. She just didn't ever read them. And she found it was then that her confidence began to soar. She discovered she really could do those things that everybody else wanted to tell her you couldn't do. She loved reading Norman Vincent Peale. I was a great fan of Norman Vincent Peale when I was a young pastor. You remember Dr. Peale was the pastor of Marble Collegiate Church in New York, someone who believed that a person's faith could help give them such a positive attitude in life. And that's what happened um, for her. It gave her such a positive attitude. In the end, she would get married she would become the, uh, to the governor of Kentucky. Actually, when he was running for office, the crowds always turned out. They weren't anxious to see him. They were anxious to see her. And while he was then governor, that's when she was obviously first lady. They had two children. And it was such a wonderful time in her life. It was her children who'd look back on her and say, we, you know the beauty of mom on the outside. We know the beauty of mom on the inside. She was such an amazing and loving mom. To go through such a difficult time, it turned out that she kept saying, you know, life is what you make it. You can have hard times, but they don't have to be the defining moments of your life. What none of us knew was she had a blood disorder for 35 years, 35 years. Doctors had expected her to die before she was 60 years old. But she made it. She made it because of a determined spirit, because of her faith, because she was determined to embrace all of life in spite of the difficult things that came her way. From so many critics and people saying you can't do it, to health struggles, to divorce, she had known it all. And she still was a radiant and loving spirit who brought a smile to so many. You know, this past Sunday, I was really talking all about that very issue. How, you know, life isn't always fair. And life doesn't always work out the way you plan. But it's because of our faith that we discover a grace in Jesus Christ that has enables us to take the most difficult moments in life and still make something good out of them. It was Paul who would write, 
I know that all things can work together for good of those who love the Lord. We trust in that. So go out. Be willing to confront your critics. Be willing to confront the struggles and the moments in your life. Don't be afraid. Go out and make it a great day.